Hello everyone, it's Andy Glenn here, welcoming you all to another Sharks TV podcast. And today I'm joined by John Dunbar and Martin Grubb. Welcome gentlemen, how are you doing? Doing good, thanks Andy, how are you doing? Good. I'm I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> it's, uh, how are you doing Martin? Good, yeah, really good. Happy to be alongside John this time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah maybe I'll understand some of his language, Mason's got his own language, so. Mason was that, that was a good podcast. I liked that podcast. Yeah. There was a lot of good, a lot of good uh, conversation energy. in that. Full energy, Mason. Yes, right. yeah. good guy. Sounds it was really good. Right, Did you watch yeah. it, John? Uh, bits and pieces. I'll have to get back to it. Uh, showbiz keeps me pretty busy these days. So does he? I'll circle back though. I'll, I'll get to it. Don't worry. It's on the it's on the to do list. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you clearly have been busy because we've got a new TV studio. What's this like? I'm loving this. Hey, nothing but the best, right? Yeah. We're putting out the best content, we've got to have the best studio. Well, That's it. it's nice to see our new title sponsors, Dynamic Property Services, on the boards behind us. And uh, it's just looking great. It just means it's another step towards the start of the hockey season, doesn't it? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, it's uh, Time's flying by now. We're going to be on the ice in, in no time, so really looking forward to it. We've probably just about got our, our full squad announced, and there's maybe one or two... Surprises up your sleeves, Martin. I'm just trying to gauge if you get anything more to come. No. Okay, that'll be the end of that conversation. You know what we, you know what we have done, though, Andy? Well, right? Yeah. Obviously, it's like every other... We talk about this every time. I know. And you see in all these armchair coaches and, you know, I've seen this week about finances and... Do you know what we've done? We've built, we've built a group, as good a group as we can right now. Money is not an object, right? It's not about, well, you know, we've, not got, we've got the backing for John for the top down to be the best we can possibly be. But what we've deliberately done is we've we've managed to get who we've got. I'm very confident in that group. That group will be better. It will be more competitive. It's a year down the line. But there's spaces left on purpose. Because, again, we've discussed it in here that people will move, and they may move very quickly. And if everybody's got their 23-man roster, guess what? They don't got any room. So people can say what they want, oh, we should have signed this or that or him or her. Or, like, it's irrelevant. We've got what we've got. We're happy with our group and we have space. And we will be actively searching and actively being ready to pounce when that little bit of kind of room to manoeuvre or a wee bit of magic becomes available. We'll be the team that strikes and we'll improve our group when we can. Um, you know, and if we can't or if that does not happen, we're really comfortable with the group we've got. Well, thanks for that. And talking about armchair coaches... Um, I have to say I've been quite enjoying myself this week trying to work out lines and all the rest of it mm -hmm. as, as my as my role as a professional armchair coach um, Owen big Owen our <laughs> announcer um, Owen Blackstock shout out to him and uh, he, he him and him and me have been chatting and, and always waiting on the birth of his his new son so all the best to him and Bromley for, for when that happens hopefully it's hopefully it's soon but we've been putting lines back and forwards to ourselves and we've been having Great fun uh, doing it. Um, did you guys do that? Well, obviously you do as a coach. <laughs> <laughs> you, you paid to do the coach. I, like, I was yeah. meaning, I was meaning John and the <sighs> the, the players. Do you? How about we look at lines think, and all those? I mean, I think uh, you always, even throughout my whole career, I think you always speculate that when you know before the season starts, you're looking at new signings coming in and you're thinking where you might potentially slide in. Um, but no, I mean, ultimately that's up to that's up to the gaffer there. He's he's the one that picks that, and I think. It's 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 like with any sport, you, you have a roster and, and you, going into a season, you don't really know until you start getting on the ice because, um, you know, throughout training and, and preseason, that's usually when you find out, you know, where chemistry fits and, uh, you know, who, who slots in certain positions um, to, to kind of sort out roles. So, um, yeah, I think you have an idea in your head, but until you actually start, start the training sessions and, and get those preseason games under your belt, um, you don't really know. You don't really know the, the full the full fit of it all. Well, uh, the good news, both me and Owen had you in our top line. I'm just saying that. <laughs> I don't know if Martin's saying the same thing yet. Are you still keeping that under wraps? Or? I'm waiting on my kids to tell me what the lines are. <laughs> 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 no, I, I think, like you say, Andy, every, everybody does it. Um, and even as a coach, like you've got to... You've got to trial and error. You've got to find yeah. where some of the chemistry comes. You know, do you... One of the decisions for... for you know, a group like ours is do we play in pairs, find a couple of good pairings, and then, you know, you add the, the other part of the jigsaw in there. Um, but that's what, as we say, that's what John's just said, that's what preseason's all about. 
we'll, we'll play around with them. We'll probably have loads of different combinations. We'll find what works for us, what works for the players. And when once we know certain things click, then you know we'll be we'll be good to go. The back end, what I would say, is maybe a little bit more comfortable because certainly um, that kind of top four for last year with RC and Kel and Stents and Kersey are back. Obviously, Danks is back and, and was in that group. So it's whether we split, do we split them up a little bit? Do we are we happy where we are? That's probably the only decision on that end. But um, everybody you're, plays. You're, cause, bit, you're causing me stress because me, no, me and one never even looked at that. We just kept it the same as last last year's parents. <laughs> now you've thrown another another unknown into the mix here. Just keep me you on your toes. It'll be more fun though. Give you more with. hours of fun. Yeah, to play around. <laughs> with hours it. of fun. Isn't Maybe deep. then you need to start thinking of who, what goalie will play, what games and stuff. Is because you've got to think oh, around. Yeah. So. There's a lot that goes into no, it. Yeah, like, yeah I, I think I could become a full time armchair coach. That is a good profession. Do you do you? As players, do you make suggestions of who you who you think you play best with, or do you just does that feel like it's encroaching on what Martin's want? And ultimately, as I say, we all know that. But do you get the chance to influence uh, some of these decisions? I mean, ultimately, it's it's Martin's yep. job to, to do that. Um, but I do think you start to realize that there might be something in training where you see something and, and you might bring it forward um, if you're working well with somebody. Um, or, you know, maybe it's a power play or special teams uh, scenario where you might think you might click with, with somebody. Um, and then I think it's, you know, something that you can bring forward and, and certainly look at. But, uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, the coach is the one that's going to make the decisions on, on what he, he sees as uh, the best fit for, for the overall group. Yeah, absolutely. Martin, your thoughts? I mean, obviously, you've got, you've got two assistant coaches this year as well. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I... I very much learned over the years that you should have some of these like conversations with the players. It used to be, you know, I guess old school back in the day, whatever you want to, f to phrase it, that oh, what the coach says goes. But the other guy's feeling it. The other guy's on the ice. The other guy's known kind of if there's yeah you know, little set plays on certain situations. You know, if we've got a guy who's winning every ozone face off on on one side, it may be that you know we work on set things there and. And when you've got, you know, older players that have got a lot of experience, you know, and obviously someone like John, you'd be stupid mm -hmm. not to use that. Yeah. Because they've been around the game a long time, obviously highly skilled, sees the ice well. So if I can find something that can give our whole group a little advantage, we would be wrong not to use it. So, yeah, ultimately it's, you know, it's my job, the, assistant, the coaching staff's job, but I think we're a very open and honest group. So we have open honest conversations with, with every player um, and I think they should they should know that it's a it's an environment where you can you can come and say listen I've, you know, I've got a question or I've been thinking this and you know they understand that I'll listen and, and if it's you know, if it's a good idea that's going to ultimately work yeah we tweak it great if it's something that's not again there's kind of no silly questions here because the, the be all and end all is how do we get everybody in our group performing to the best of their ability on every, any given night and if that means involving players a little bit more fine but you know ultimately I'm not obviously not on the, the naive side either to know that the buck stops with me so I've got to make the decisions when push comes to shove you're, made, you're making me think of something that I learned back in the day this is going to be a really educational podcast <laughs> going to talk high level here gestalt theory yeah, ever, heard of, ever heard of that it basically means <laughs> that the sum of individuals together working well can be greater than the total of those those individuals. So it's about the team spirit. And you kind of alluded to that, Martin, on the, the 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 last podcast with Mason when you talked about some of the football teams that were unfancy to go in and win. It, and it's how you it's how you create that 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 group um, efficiency rather than individual efficiencies. And that's what you're talking about. Some of these partnerships, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Like every, you know, every every team, every team sport, they're very quick to say, you know, and, and we hear it here. You know, it's a family. It's a band of brothers. Well, you've got to create that. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't go without any work to it. And, it's not easy either. Yeah, you know, it's not easy. And you know, and sometimes when you come up against it a little bit more, and you know, you get a bit of adversity. That reveals people's true character, and it reveals your group's character. So it's you need these things. Yeah, and you need everybody to be pulling on the rope in the same direction because ultimately I, I do still believe that, that, you know, as you say, we discussed 
some of these teams in, in the yep. the Euros and stuff that it, it's not it's not necessarily about the individual talent. You could have the best individually talented team, but if they don't pull and together and work together as a group, there will be friction in there. For us, we've always had a, a really good team spirit, a really good group. You know, we've discussed this for day one of doing these that the person aspect is still the most important, and that mantra doesn't just come from me; it comes from the top down. You know, as, as John is the owner. Um, into our management group, into the off-ice staff, into the on-ice staff. You know, I think that the the power in this team is it comes from from the group. So, yeah, you have to work at it. It's not easy at times. There will be friction, but if that's what makes us successful, then you know we'll continue doing what's right for us. And that's what you, as a coach, when you talk about systems, when you talk about coaches' corner and all the rest of it, that's some of the stuff that you're you're talking about there, isn't it? Definitely, and and I think you also got to people have to remember that there's accountability you know within on the ice people are the fans are very quick in any sport in any team to I guess point fingers or have opinions on what they see on the ice but everybody's got to be accountable you know a coach and as part of your coach or coaching staff or management can maybe be taking some of the heat off of people because we're as accountable obviously as the, as the players themselves and again like we said that like what might just, what it's John and I in the front of a bus obviously we've kind of lost our third amigo and, and Craig um, <laughs> not playing well, this year we'll playing, but, well, I, could, but that's again same thing on the bus last year we would sit and we, we would you would sometimes just chew the fat but other times it would get a little bit specific and you're just trying to find ways to to make everybody better including myself as much as the players and if everybody can be accountable everybody has that we're very big on everybody has to trust each other if everybody trusts each other to do their own job then you will get success and you can get a, a greater success than you're expecting if you work really hard at that. I'm normally asking you nice, friendly questions, but going to ask you a more difficult question uh, this year. So continue to talk to me, please. Just don't give me the the smack in the mouth that I probably <laughs> deserve for it. Last year, 5 on 3 power play wasn't it great. You were on the ice most of the time. John, what are we going to do differently this year? to make that more effective because we had a number of opportunities and it just, it was a it was a frustration. Everybody's doing their, as best as they can. How do you even go about trying to improve these sorts of things, guys? Um, it's John's fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it, it's, it's actually, it's kind of what Martin was just speaking of. I think, um, you know, like having those conversations and, and not being not being too proud to, to hear other people's opinions. Um, I think, you know, you're obviously, you're bang on. The 5 on 3 was atrocious at times last year. And I think sometimes you get stuck in just trying to make one thing work over and over and you're kind of beating your head against the wall. And sometimes it takes that taking a step back outside of it and, and being like, all right, this clearly isn't working. And almost having an open discussion. And, um, you know, I like it in one breath. Our five on three wasn't great last year, but I do think we we did have a good group last season, and we will have the same this year. As far as um, you know, people having a voice, having a voice, and being yeah. able to to you know have an opinion towards something towards um, you know spe even not five on three, it could be penalty kill as well. Yeah, um, just special teams in general. It could be systems, whatever it might be. Just having a having your own voice to to speak up and you say, hey, I think this might work and we should try this. Because um, like I say, if you're just too proud and, and stubborn where you're like, this is how it should be, um, you're not going to yeah. get too far with it. Absolutely. Martin, any thoughts? Yeah, like everybody's trying to do the same thing. I think that's one yeah. of the, the parts that through our off-season now, yeah, expect myself especially, uh, you know, I like to go away and review things obviously, but it's a great time to learn. The NHL development camps and you know people go, oh, what's well, NHL? It's the same game, so you can watch the development camps. You can start to watch the start of people's seasons, even the tail end of the you know Stanley Cup final. You start to see little different things that then if you could build your special teams, mm -hmm. your five or five play, your D zone play around just little tweaks um, to try and get an advantage. Like you've got to be willing to do that. You've also then like this summer which again we've do well documented a few times we've had a little bit more time I mean like last year obviously when you know, it was it was John, Phil and David together then yeah. myself um, 
Jamie, uh, obviously then Craig come in, then John come in late, and yeah, everyone else was probably focused on other things as, as maybe opposed to me being able to do a, a bit more of the system oriented stuff early. Um, plus it was new, so I think we're all in a really good place, we're all in a really positive place where everybody trusts each other, everybody knows what everybody's doing. We're, you know, obviously we're building the club as we've always said we will and continuing to get I see more powerful off the ice, you know, the, the whole brand. So now for me, a lot of it is, right, let's build the team and let's build the, the kind of round holes and the round pegs here rather than, right, what are we going to do now? I need to run about doing this. Everybody's in a good spot. So it's now finding the little, finding the areas that we can exploit. Now, five and three, power play in general, at, at times, I'll say, I don't think it was always bad. At times it wasn't great. But then, you know, p people will probably forget near the time we won a game in Bristol on a 5-3. We, the night we beat Milton Keynes, the second night we scored a 5-3. We scored a 5-4 that night. We scored a power play goal against Leeds. We never conceded the night we beat Leeds. We never conceded on the penalty kill at that stage. And did it start slow? Of course it did. But now we 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 just have to find consistency. Um, and on the flip side, and as John was saying, you also have to give a little bit of freedom, flexibility and creativity to mm -hmm. the players on the ice because I'm a great believer in you take what's given because if we can have set play A, B, C but you know, if somebody takes them away you've got a guy like John on the ice or, or you know, Nolan for example whoever it may be if they see something then they, have, they need to know that we're, we're not robotic on our, on our special teams now so um, when we get back on the ice here there'll be a lot of focus on Defensive zone and special teams is, is two of the focuses. And, you know, I'm sure even as players, the speed of another team's penalty kill on a five and three, what teams are doing now will, will it'll be fresh. It'll, it won't be new. Um, we'll be able to exploit that a little bit more. And obviously the plan is to find a way to put the puck in it. It doesn't have to be pretty. I think that's maybe, a, maybe it's maybe a bit harsh, but you know, John will be able to probably give you a little bit more of an insight from on the ice. But sometimes watching video back I felt we tried to be too cute we wanted to and I like I, you know, I love sexy hockey if you want to put it that way it's the goals are unbelievable but sometimes we maybe try to overplay um, so it's finding a balance because all you hear in the arena is shoot and that doesn't work all the time <laughs> but overhandling also on the flip side can be negative so it's finding the balance letting these guys you know see what they see on the ice feel how they feel find a little pockets of space and Try and punish teams. If if I can just on that, if I can take you back to when we chatted after the under twenty World Championships here, and I think I was chatting chatting to you about the Korean um, uh, penalty kill, which was super, and you basically said they've designed, they've got players in to fit into that particular system, and it's you said it was like that's their horses, that, that yeah, that's how regimented. they do it. So you're also trying to find the best system for the players that you've got as well. Isn't that the case? Yeah, I mean, you see that, like, and anybody that watched us last year sees it. We're a player with John Skill. You've got a bit more flexibility to go find some ice, make things happen. But initially we started Nolan in the in the bumper row, in that middle of the slot. Then we realised that we could become a bit more successful. We felt with him going into the goal line and making some plays. Scotty scored that winning goal in Bristol from the bumper because we found that. Cali then gave us a left-handed option. So it's probably, in an ideal world this year, we'd like to have two units playing two totally different ways where, you know, let's say John's unit, for, for wanting to call it that, would be running X and, you know, for example, Mason would run Y. Yeah. So teams that are not sure what's coming, we're, let's say we're not sure about up. it, but mm -hmm. both units can play to their strengths. Um, and I think that's, like you say, going back to the, the kind of comment about the Koreans, that's where they are. Yeah. One, they're regimented because they're working together every single day. And secondly, yeah, they build their units based on what they have. So we need to find that where our shooters are, you know, where our kind of net presence is and all the little details that make us... Uh, make us better, make us have a higher percentage chance of scoring goals. And I think, I think to be honest, I think the players understand that as much as the coaching staff do now as well. And, um, you know, you're never going to sit here and guarantee things, but we'll be better on that, mm. both penalty kill and, and power play this year. I was just reminiscing on some of the podcasts that we've had <coughs> before, and I think one of the, 
the nicest or the best statements from last season's podcast was about you, John. I think it was Craig Peacock who basically said, if Dunbar's playing, make sure your stick's on nice because you could get a pass at any time when you <laughs> least expect it. So be be ready for, for that. And I don't know if you, you said you watched parts of Mason's um, and Martin's uh, podcast. There was a really interesting start um, that you were either scored or were involved with just shy of 50% of all the Sharks' goals, which is an amazing stat. Um, I'm guessing you're going to want somebody to share that burden with you this year. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I think it's like what, what Spud was saying before, though, is about uh, like personnel fitting in whatever, like yeah. you build the special teams around the this, doing this, and different players. I, I definitely would probably put my hand up and say, um, you know, just I also adjusted to a different standard of hockey last year to a different league. And I know <laughs> I kind of laugh because I've heard it my whole career. Shoot the puck more, <laughs> shoot the puck more. And I hear it in my sleep. Do you hear that through the TV as well? Uh, I know. The streams as well. But <laughs> there's an element of truth to it. You know, like when Spud says, you know, yeah, all the fans shoot the puck, shoot the puck. And we're like, yeah, yeah, well, it's not that simple. Like you don't see it from our perspective. But I will put my hand up and say, you know, I think there are times um, you know, Martin alluded to it, where you are a bit too cute. And I think that is something that we might have ran into trouble with last season is being a little bit predictable in special teams or being like, yeah. oh, we know what that guy's going to do. You know? just oh, he has it. the puck, he's going to look to, you know what I mean? I like that's the thing we wanted to play. That was our, that uh -huh. maybe was a, yeah. to our detriment, we wanted to play nice hockey. Mm -hmm. But what about it, some of the goals your man scored last season? <laughs> I mean, I think that, hockey, yeah. It's probably what's proves the point, right? When, yeah. when, when it was on, and you can go back to any game when our, when our PP or our, you know, our offensive game was on. We scored some really good goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as John's going to allude to in his point there, is that sometimes we were guilty yeah. of maybe taking the wrong decision. But, yeah. you know, we're, we will all, every one of us, take that account at Berlin and we'll learn from that. Yeah, so 100%. Scrappy goal counts the same as our beautiful goal. Exactly, goals. exactly. And then for every, you know, sexy, nice goal that you see, there, there could be eight other opportunities where you're doing probably too much. And it's like, well, maybe if you just take take an opportunity, take a shot, it, might, it won't, doesn't have to be pretty. Um, so, yeah, no, I think it's just like what Spud says. You, you learn from it, and it's a, it's a fresh slate this year, and uh, we'll see what happens, but I'm excited for it. See, uh, you know, it's weird that they're so modest. I'm bigging them up about his stats and all the rest <laughs> of that. And he completely avoided the question and just answered. Person. I wanted to answer. That's, pro to, that's proper learned. hockey. Is that my first podcast? <laughs> it's, per it's the personal first part of it. They're just humble, humble, under the radar. Like, I don't think I actually know if he knows how talented he is, but um, that's what probably makes him so good because he just does his thing and he's not looking for plaudits. He's just looking to help his team. But we'll not, we'll not embarrass him any anymore, but we know how good he is and he's... Yeah. Blooming good. Well, we're definitely happy as on our team, that's for sure. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, we're talking about lines. The only other thing that um, me and my buddy were talking about um, <laughs> the, the other day were, uh, he's going to be captains and alternate captains. Are you able to share any of that with us? Or are you going to keep that under your hat? Yeah, it's definitely staying under there. <laughs> definitely stay, definitely <laughs> staying under there. It's staying under there, but you know what? See, when we're ready to share that, you and the fans and everybody surrounding this club will, will definitely be the first to know. Um, we've got, you know what, the good thing, Andy, is we have some options. Yeah. It's difficult when you had a, you know, such an iconic leader in, in Struan for so long. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to pick the right, especially as a captain, you've got to pick the right person because that's a, it could be a burden that some people may not handle. Um, you know, we're pretty pretty set on I think how we're going to go in the leadership but again that's one of the ones when you're talking about you know, kind of as a much conversation of course coaching staff but you know somebody like John and obviously Craig is the general manager mm -hmm. um, within that hockey specific side of things we've had some chats and um, that'll go right up to the you know, to the top where, where John is the owner and um, we've got options and we're comfortable with the, the amount of leaders and the roles people can play it's just formalising it and um, if I'm honest, the f person that will know before anybody will be the the new captain. Yeah, of course. Um, so we've we've not done that part yet, but it's kind of watch this space. We're gonna go different alternate captains at home and away, like we've done in past years. Possibly, seasons. yeah. I, th I like a, I like a slightly bigger leadership group. I think it helps the captain. It helps run the dressing room. Um, just spread a little bit of the 
the responsibility. Uh, we, we won't do it for the sake of doing it, but yeah, there will be a little bit of and maybe different alternates um, just to help manage us through the process. Okay, thanks for that. Um, we're getting to the end of this podcast. We've got you know a few more to record to today. Not giving away any secrets, but um, we've got a few more to record, so we'll we'll move on. But um, Mason started something last week. You know, only one person got Kendrick Lamar, other than you, <laughs> Mister Grub, who knew the answer right away. And I'm looking at Mason like this is different language. Mason came up with a bit of challenge the fans. He's going to do like some music questions or some trivia questions. So uh, I hope you've got you've got something. Uh, John Martin's always got a, a something bad a bit trivia. different when it's time, Andy. Something a little bit different. A little bit different. Well, yeah. Do you want to do a message to the fans first, or do you want to? To your podcast, you're the guy for my here. podcast. You right, call right, the okay. shots, Andy. Well, I'll I'll say thank you <laughs> to everyone for watching, and I do need you to like, share, and subscribe. You're not doing it. I know you're not doing it because I can see how many folk are like, sharing, and subscribing. So get it done, okay? For the boys. Um, now, message to the fans from John Dunbar first. Um, no, just uh, really excited to get going here. I feel like um, the summer kind of dragged on and, and we're finally, you know, the season's fast approaching here and I uh, just can't wait to get going. And um, I'm excited to see you guys all back at the Shark Tank and excited to, to, to make some exciting winning memories in the Shark Tank. So uh, looking forward to it. Martin, <laughs> message to the fans first. Yeah, I guess it's the same as it's kind of always. It's thanks for the support so far and the, you know, everybody for buying season tickets, pre-season game tickets. You know there's still some seats available, so make sure you continue to do that. Um, and as a group, from coaching staff right through to the players, we're excited to be back on the ice and uh, can't wait to be performing in front of you um, sooner than we think now. So yeah, we look forward to seeing everybody. Right, now something a wee bit different. Now as long as you don't embarrass me or John, <laughs> off you go. Well, I'm okay, thinking, yeah. I think you could be the guinea pig here. I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, dear. You can answer the first one, and then the fans are going to... It's about interaction, Andy, right? Mason asked a little question. I've never seen enough interaction. You're asking people to like, share, and Aye. subscribe. I want some interaction with our fans. Okay. A lot of people watch these, so, you know, start typing. So, in a music sense, if you're having a dream headline, if you're headliners, if you like, for a festival, you get three. You've got to have a current artist or band. You have to reform a band or an artist is to kind of come back at retirement and you've got to bring a band or artist back for the dead to play. Three artists oh. headlining it, what, who would it be? And you want me to answer that right you here, right now? You could try that right now if you could want, you, but certainly you, as, as could fans... Could you not give me the whole podcast to think of this one and give no, me a bit no, of a clue at the, the start? That's the whole point. Like you've, if you're an armchair fan, you've got to make snap decisions coaching-wise. So. <laughs> armchair coach, snap coaching decisions, Andy. Well... <laughs> I kind of quite like the snuts, so I'd have them up as the, so the current. current their, their, their current. Um, a band that I've... Yeah, I don't know. If it's a, if it's a, we're talking a festival concert. Was well, your headline, it? Your, it's your I'd, festival. So. I'd, I'd, I'd whack on ACDC just because it's just a massive crowd filler. Maybe not my favourite music, but... So where, where do they fall in? Do they have to reform? Therefore, yeah, they're... Uh, we're not yeah, doing. Yeah, we're not doing. They're they're coming coming back from not the dead, but they're kind of reforming. reforming to, right, so, the other, yeah. so now the next one has to be at least one of the band, or if it's a single artist, has to be uh, coming back. <clears throat> that's quite a difficult one. Just because it's the only one that's in my head at the minute, I'd put status quo in because obviously Parfit's away, so uh, he'd come back. So it's kind of heavy metal type. Type thing. That's probably not the best. I need to rethink about this. And we I'm can gonna, revisit that for you. I'm going yeah. to spot. I appreciate I'm that. It, right. okay. But I'd love to hear for the fans, mm -hmm. and even just people casually drop them in to watch this. Get your comments out there because I'm interested. I love this stuff. So get your comments. I really want to see who's oh, putting this one. kind of. This takes thing a bit of time. This is, there's a bit of thought on oh, this yeah. one. I think. You know, like I mean, because it changes as well, right? Right now, I'd maybe put Luke Combs as my headliner, right. as my current, but I'm always reforming Oasis. And then I'm bringing back potentially Queen right now, but it might be Nirvana. Oh, Queen's a good show. <laughs> Queen's a good show. I've gave you three there. Yeah, I want Freddie back now. Yeah, Cole's just being elbowed. Yeah, I like that. 
Right, a bit of discussion on the, and also some of the Dalsconies that have have liked and followed our channel. They've been watching our channel too. So uh, feel free to mm -hmm. comment get, as well. Get your, get your answers in there. From yeah, there. you got any thoughts on it, uh, John? I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one, Andy. I'm gonna have to put some some more thought into it. Not off the top of my head. Do right, you got to do it. You got to do just a Canadian one. Yeah, well, pure okay, Canadian bags. Yeah, yeah, that's why I saved them. I knew he wouldn't have enough. Yeah, I know. Right there, so. <laughs> oh, you just thought, thought I'd come up with rubbish, aye? Well, let's be honest. We talk most weeks that you and I can talk rubbish. So. We can talk yeah. rubbish. If we anybody can, can answer that, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what to do. Get some comments on there on the YouTube channel, on Facebook, wherever you're accessing this. Let us know what you think. And uh, thank you so much for watching. This is Andy Glancy and Cheerio.